Hi everyone, welcome to the art preparation in chemistry. Now I'll continue my lectures on amino acid. I think this is the last video. In previous videos, we will discuss the uh, like a synthesis of amino acids as well as a reactions of amino acids with respect to the NH2, COOH as well as both com combination reactions. Now in this case, in in this session, we will discuss the, a new comp new content that is a peptide. That is nothing but a peptide synthesis. A peptide synthesis. Now, however, the peptide is nothing but a amide bonds in a like a different uh, protein series is called a peptide. Okay. Now let us let us discuss the like a peptide synthesis as well as analysis of those two uh, uh, those end groups of peptides. Like uh, one is NH2 end group, another one is COOH end group. Okay. Now let us discuss it one by one very clearly. The first one is uh, like a uh, introduction of a peptide series. Now here. It is NH2, CHR1, here COOH. So this is the one of the amino acid. Now again, which is treated with another amino acid, this, that is also NH2, CHR2, COOH. These two are the amino acids. Okay, these two are combinedly to form the like a, a new C double bond O NH functionality. CHR2, like a COOH. Now here CHR1, like a NH2. Okay, so this is not the synthesis method. Now, just I'll, I'll explain the uh, the formation of a peptide a peptide linkage. Okay, now here it forms the uh, CO and H2 bond that is called amides. Okay, so amide bonds in a protein series is called peptide. So this is the uh, peptide bond. Okay, now here the combination of two amino acids will give the only one peptide. So in generally, n number of amino acids will give the n minus one number of peptide linkages peptide linkages now n number of amino acids will give the n minus one number of peptide so in case of uh, like a uh, three amino acids will give the two peptide linkages four amino acids will give the three peptide linkages okay that is the very simple thing okay now let us uh, let us discuss the uh, detailed analysis on cynh now here it is the c double bond o n h okay so it is c double bond o n h so this is the amide linkage now here nitrogen having the lone pairs that lone pairs participate the like a keto enol tautomerism it gives the another uh, resonating structure okay here it gives the resonating structures so in this case we will got the two types of uh, resonating structure among the two only one is stable now let us examine here it is the r group so here all the all the groups are considered as r now here all the groups are considered as r2 let us examine okay now here c double bond o like R, pure nitrogen, it may be possible like R over the H. Okay, not only this, here it is also possible here hydrogen will shift it towards the upside, it gives the one compound. Here, in case hydrogen will uh, will orientate the bottom of the group, then it forms the another, another isomer. Okay, now here it forms the two types of isomers. So one is both the both the R groups are same side here, both R groups are opposite side. Okay, now before going to that uh, detailed analysis on these two groups, here C comma n that is a c single bond n here it is let it is assumed to be a single bond due to the bond length of a c n it is very closer to the double bond character so in a amide linkage of a protein series here it assumed to be like a, a double bond nature so here it is a, a double bond compound that means here it, it these two groups are in the same side of the double bond then it is yes cis isomer here the, these two groups are opposite side then it is called s trans isomer s trans isomer now among these two here the trans isomer is more stable trans isomer is more stable when compared to the cis due to the like a steady crowding it is a lesser the stable here it is the more stable compound here it is the more stable compound now here c single bond n it forms the double bond so here this carbon is a double bond that means here it is the sp2 carbon sp2 carbon means here these three groups are lies in a same plane these three groups are lies in a same plane now this carbon this nitrogen atom will also participate in the resonance that means here also here the these two groups are also same plane here these two groups are also same plane so however six groups are uh, are lies in the same plane six not the groups the six atoms are lies in a same plane is it clear 
I'll explain one more time now here. Carbonyl compound that is the sp2 carbon. Sp2 carbon indicates it is a trigonal planar shape. Okay. Now the due to the uh, planarity of these compound, so oxygen or the R group and nitrogen are, are in same plane. Okay. So if these three groups are in same plane, nitrogen will participate in the resonating that indicates uh, here these two groups are uh, these two atoms are also in the lies in the same plane. So totally six atoms uh, lies in a same plane. So here it is the like 120 degrees. So here also it is 120 degrees. Due to that here CO and H here it is the R group here it is the like R group these two are oriented in the like above and below the plane here hydrogen one is above the plane and another one is below the plane here it is the hydrogen one is above the plane and below the plane now I'll, I'll show the molecule very clearly now here it is NH2 okay see here H and R dash that is one is uh, below the plane and another one is above the plane C double bond O NH okay C double bond O N H here H here R group uh, that is uh, like a C H and R dash here it is a C O O H this is the compound that indicates here these all are in same plane these six atoms are in same plane if all are atoms in the same plane plane or mighty if hydrogen group is it may be above the plane or it may be below the plane here R group is one is above the plane and another one is below the plane this is the uh, geometry of peptide linkage okay so now I'll show the uh, three-dimensional geometry of these type of uh, peptide linkage in below okay which observes very clearly so one group of the like here here one of the hydrogen group will appear it may be above the plane in the next place it may be appears like below the plane so that is the like a linkage a, a three-dimensional geometry will give the complete uh, 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 understandable concept of the these peptide linkages okay so this is the very basic introduction of the peptide linkages now let us go through the like the synthesis of peptides synthesis of peptides Now let us synthesize the peptide molecules, peptide uh, series. Okay. Now here it is the compound CHR, COOH, and H2. This is alpha amino acid. Again, this is another alpha amino acid. And H2, CHR2, COOH. Okay. Now here it is R1 and R2. So let us assume here it is the glycine and here it is the alanine. That means um, glycine ala compound or ala glycine compound. So here it forms the two types of uh, uh, yeah, uh, pep protein synthesis. Sorry, peptide series. Now here carboxylic acid of glycine and uh, amino group of the alanine will, will use the one of the peptide series or in other words, so Carboxylic acid group of the alanine and uh, amine functionality of the glycine will use the another type of isomer. Okay. However, it forms the like a, a one peptide series. Okay. Now here two amino acids will use the one peptide series. So that is a, a, like a dipeptide. Okay. Only one amide bond is there. So two amino acids will use the like dipeptide will called as a dipeptide. Three amino acids will use the uh, peptide series. Then it is called tripeptide, etc. Okay. So now here n number of amino acids will use the n minus one number of uh, peptide uh, peptides or amide bonds. So now here two amino acids will use the only one peptide linkage. Okay. Now here how, how it is prepared like uh, how it is prepared uh, through the uh, different methods. Okay. Now first of all. Here, one of these carboxylic acid group from the glycine and NH2 group from the alanine will give the one type of uh, peptide series, one type of peptide series. Now, here it is only reacted, here also it is only reacted. So, NH2 group of the glycine and COOH group of the alanine, let us assume here R1 is equal to H, R2 is equal to methyl, okay. Now, NH2 of the glycine and uh, COOH group of the alanine both are unreacted okay so just first of all we protected the those unreacted functional groups unreacted functional group first of all protection of nh2 group second one protection of COOH group okay first of all we will protect it, these two molecules then followed by the addition of DCC that means dicyclohexyl carbodiamide dicyclohexyl carbodiamide okay this is the compound here see here nitrogen 
Okay, so dicyclohexyl carbodiamide. Here the DCC will uh, enhances the rate of leaving group capacity of OH functionality. That's why here uh, uh, it enhances the uh, rate of amide bond formation. Okay, now here it is COnH, CHR2, COOH, here like a CHR1, NH. Here it is protected PZ, here also protected that is PZ. So two groups are protected. So this is the third step that is a, like a formation of amide with DCC with a DCC. Now the fourth one. So after the formation of a peptide, so now we will get the peptide series, but it's not perfect pep peptide. Why? Because here it having the like a two protecting groups. So the next step is removal of a peptide series. Removal of, a, sorry, protecting groups. So here the removal of a two protecting groups either at the same time or like one by one we will remove it based on the like reaction conditions. So these four methods are Im uh, important to synthesize the a peptide molecule. Okay, now I'll give I will recall the all the things now here. So first of all here amino acid will use the uh, peptide series. Here two amino acids will use the peptide then it is called dipeptide. Dipeptide having the only one amide functionality that is only one peptide fun functionality. Okay. If three amino acids will use the tripeptide it having the three minus one uh, two peptide series two peptide bonds. Okay. Now here site uh, here amide part uh, amide linkage is called a peptide. We already discussed amide linkage is called a peptide. Now let us go through the certain uh, peptide series representation. Now let us go through the uh, tripeptide series NH2, CHR1, CO, NH, here CHR2. CO like NH here like CHR3 CO and CO OH. So here it forms the a peptide series, it forms the three amino acid. That's why it is called as a tri peptide series. A tri peptide series. Here let us assume here it is maybe like a glycine, valine, methionine. So let us assume glycine, valine, methionine. So these type of amino acids will represent the IUPAC nomenclature. So here, ic acid, that is glutamic acid or aspartic acid, or ions, uh, glycine, valine, methionine, phenylalanine, ions, both are replaced by the ile. Last group, last amino acid will represented as usually. Okay, now here it is glycine. Ion is replaced by the ile, glycyl, valine. Valine is ion replaced by the ile, valyl, methionine. Here last one is same. So this is the like peptide series. So glycyl valine with your name. Okay. So let us assume here it is valine, serine, TRE. So tryptophan. Okay. Or uh, any other groups like uh, cysteine, CYS. Okay. Valyl, serine, cysteine. Okay. These are the amino group uh, IUPAC nomenclature. Now, however, the representation of amino acid is very important thing. So, uh, representation of amino acid is always, it is a constant. Okay. Now, here NH2 always represented the left side. NH2 group always represented the left side. So, COOH functionality always represented the right side. Okay. Now, NH2 always left side. COOH group always right side. So, NH2 left side attached, left side ending Amino acid is called N-terminal amino acid. N-terminal amino acid. So right side ending amino acid is called C-terminal amino acid. C-terminal amino acid. It is a, it is a particular, it is a constant representation of a, a peptide series. So left side always N-terminal, right side always C-terminal. So based on the N-terminal and C-terminal amino, uh, C-terminal amino acid groups, we will analyze the a peptide series which is N-terminal amino acid, which is a C-terminal amino acid. Okay. Now let us discuss those N-terminal and C-terminal analysis on the peptide series one by one. So first of all, we will start the uh, series of C-terminal amino acids. Okay, the first of all, C-terminal amino acid, that is A. C-terminal amino acid. And in this case, first one is uh, like a carboxy peptidase. Carboxy 
peptidase. So this is the very important thing. So here one mole of carboxypeptidase, it cuts like a C-terminal amino acid only. One mole, it cuts one of the C-terminal amino acid. Let us assume here it is valine, like cysteine, methionine functionality. Methionine, uh, this is the peptide series. Now, whenever we use the one mole of carboxypeptidase, one mole of carboxypeptidase, it cuts only one mole of C-terminal amino acid. We will discuss it in previous case, C-terminal amino acid always represents the right side. So that's why we will get the valine, cysteine plus methionine. Okay, here we will get the C-terminal amino acid as usual. Okay, again, if you want to, uh, if you want to separate these two molecules or also uh, furtherly, then here it requires another mole of carboxypeptidase. So that means here valine plus cysteine. Okay, so this is the best method to uh, to analyze the C-terminal amino acid. That is the carboxypeptidase. So here we will separate the each and every amino acid in a peptide series. Okay, so uh, if you have the like a four member of series, we will we will use the three moles of carboxypeptidase. Carboxypeptidase. Now the second one is like that is a hydrogenolysis. Hydrogenolysis. Okay, hydrogenolysis. That means here the addition of hydrogen uh, with uh, a peptide series. However, the peptide hydrogen uh, having the nitrogen, uh, that nitrogen atom having the lone pairs, that lone pairs uh, which is attacked over the uh, peptide carbonyl compound, then here the bonded two electron will shift it towards the oxygen atom. Again, it returns in the bonded two electrons and carbon nitrogen bond is eliminated then it forms the n minus that n minus will abstract the proton from hydrogen it creates the nh2 it forms the nh2 first of all nh2 ch r1 here c double bond o which is nh as well as nh2 so this is the first compound again how and the, here the number of hydrogens we required the number of uh, peptides if tripeptide here it having the diamide uh, linkage that means uh, diamide it requires so two moles of uh, hydrogen again another mole of hydrogen will work similarly similar as the first one now we will get the molecule like here nh2 here nh minus will abstract the proton from first mole of nh2 now we will get the nh2 chr2 here also co here the similarly we will get the NH and NH2 molecule, NH and NH2 that is a hydrogenated amino acid. Now final one is like a NH2 CHR3, so COOH, COOH. So we will get the three molecules, let us designated these molecules as X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z. Now we will get the a mixer of compound in a same uh, in a reaction mixer. So if you if you uh, if you getting the a mixer of compound, definitely we will isolate the uh, different technique methods, different uh, techniques. Now uh, the, here the main method which is used for the uh, like uh, separation of organic molecules that is ionic exchange method or column chromatography method. So column chromatography method we will take the column which is a bigger size than that of the buke. Uh, uh, a uh, burette, burette uh, be, uh, like a burette equipment. Here it is the bigger size, bigger than that of the burette. Okay, now here it is filled by the uh, white sand that is nothing but silica. Okay, so here uh, we know that silica is in acidic in nature. Silica is acidic in nature, we know that. Okay, now in this case uh, here, which is packed by the silica white sand. So after the packing of silica uh, at a little amount, uh, now we will add the our reaction mixture over there our reaction mixer okay so here it is the reaction mixer which contains x plus x plus y plus z x plus y plus z again so whenever we will add the like a mobile phase solvent that is a, like any hexane or a certain a mobile phase solvents that mobile phase solvents will uh, brings the one of these molecules way earlier one of the molecules like one by one molecules uh, as usual if we increase the polarity of uh, like a polar compounds of mobile phase we will increase the mobile phase polarity so we will get the one compounds one by one based on their polarity okay now here silica is acidic in nature acidic compounds can brings the like can binds the molecules with basic in compound basic nature okay now here it is nh2 nh2 these x and y having the hydrogen molecule here there is no availability of acidic proton these two are strong basic compounds strong basic compound here it is acidic compound that means uh, here it is the very weak basic very 
weak basic compound. So weak basic that means uh, almost all similar to the acidic compound. These two are the strong compound. So our silica can binds the these two X and Y molecules very tightly. Our silica will uh, binds the molecules very tightly. Then our mobile phase will brings the very weaker one that is acidic compounds. That is acidic compounds. So first of all we will get the acidic molecule eluted first. Acidic molecules. Eluted first, so followed by the uh, like a very weaker basis, a strong basis, very strong basis like that. Okay, if you uh, if you maintain the if you increase the polarity of uh, mobile phase, uh, we will get the molecules one by one very quickly. Okay, so this is the technique of uh, like a chromatography. Now let us go through the third method that is the lithium aluminum hydride. Okay, now the third one is a lithium aluminum hydride. So third one is a lithium aluminum hydride or lithium borohydride. Lithium borohydride. So these these two are the compounds. So whenever these uh, our peptide linkage will treat it with lithium aluminum hydride, C terminal carboxylic acid will convert into alcohol that is primary alcohol. Now here the NH2 CHR dash CO NH like a CHR2 C double bond O NH CHR3 so that is a C double bond O here C double bond OH becomes CH2OH. So it, it converts into primary alcohols. It converts into primary alcohols. After a, a, a very small acidic uh, hydrolysis, then here it is hydrolyzed. So we will get the compounds. So peptide linkage is uh, el eluted. That means uh, peptide linkage is break. NH2 CHR prime COOH plus NH2 CHR2 COOH plus NH2 CHR3 CH2OH. So here also we will get the like a mixer of compounds. So in earlier case we will discuss the mixer of compounds separation technique is a very best method is a, like a column chromatography. Okay, each and every laboratory uh, organic laboratory they are having the column chromatography technique. Okay, so that's why if having the any mixer of compounds they will proceed through the like a column chromatography. Now here we will get the again mixer of compound that is uh, uh, designated as XYZ. Okay, now here X and Y groups having the both amine and uh, acidic carboxylic acid functionality. Now Z group it having the only NH2 alcohol functionality that is a free amino alcohol. Here these are the amino, amino acids. Okay, so here uh, due to the presence of carboxylic acid X and Y are more acidic in nature when compared to the Z when compared to the Z. So whenever we will take the these three mixture of compounds in a column in previous manner like here it is a silica which is packed by the silica then after reaction mixer. Okay now X and Y are very like uh, acidic in nature when compared to the Z. So that means Z is basic compound. Z is um, like a basic compound when compared to the X and Y. So here our silica is acidic in nature. Acidic compounds can bind the basic molecules. That means our silica can bind the silica binds the Z molecule. That means uh, whenever we will uh, increases the polarity of the molecule, the first of all X and Y are eluted. So finally, uh, lastly, Z is eluted. So Z, Z eluted. At lastly, J diluted at lastly due to the basic nature. Basic compounds can combine with the can bonds with the silica compound. Okay, these three methods, uh, which are best method to analyze the C terminal amino acids. Now let us go through the N terminal amino acids. Now let us synthesize. Uh, let us discuss the N-terminal amino acid uh, synthesis. In previous case, we will discuss the all our C-terminal amino acid. One is carboxypeptidase, hydrogenolysis. Third one is lithium aluminum hydride. Now in this case, we will discuss the few of the reactions. That is a uh, N-terminal amino acid. That is B case. In 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 B case, the first one is uh, so. In previous case, we will use the carboxypeptidase. Here it cuts the one mole of uh, amino C-terminal amino acid. Now in this case, uh, amino peptidase. Okay, amine peptidase. 
So that means uh, here it cuts the like a uh, cysteine, valine, styrene. Let us assume here one mole of amino peptidase is used. Here it cuts the one terminal amino acid. We will get the valine, styrene plus cysteine. Okay. So again we use the amino peptidase and another mole. We will get the valine plus styrene. So this is the first method. So now the second method, very interesting and important method, that is Edmonds method. That is like a uh, Edmonds method. Okay, so Edmonds reagent, which is simply it is called as a, like here phenyl N double bond C double bond. Yes, we know that uh, C NCS minus is isocyano. So isocyano having the sulfur group, that means it is called thio isocyano. So here the phenyl uh, derivative of the uh, thio isocyano, then simply it is called as a phenyl isothiocyanate. So PTC, simply here it is called uh, phenyl isothiocyanate PTC. Okay, so PTC reagent is called Edmonds reagent. Whenever Edmonds reagent will treat it with our peptide series N double bond CS, here it gives the phenyl thiocarbonyl. Phenyl thiocarbonyl. So, N terminal amino acid having the NH2 functionality. That NH2 will, NH2 having the lone pits, that lone pits will attack over the like uh, electrophilic center of a phenyl uh, isothiocyanate group, then it becomes uh, CS minus. S minus will return send back their electrons. Then bonded to two electrons will shift it towards the nitrogen atom then it gives the, this type of compound phenyl nitrogen here these negative charge will abstract the proton from NH2 then it becomes NH here it is NH C double bond yes here NH one of the proton will abstracted by the N minus then it becomes NH okay now here it is CH or dash C double bond O NH CH or 2 here C double bond O NH CH or 3 C double bond OH so this is the compound so after getting the like a phenyl uh, thiocarbonyl compound so whenever we use the HCl here the presence of a SD compound here it creates the uh, cyclic compound cyclic compound whenever the nitrogen lone pairs will attack over the electrophilic center of carbonyl compound then bonded to electrons will shift it towards the oxygen atom again those bonded to electrons will return send back their electrons then it becomes N minus then it becomes N minus now we will get the a cyclic compound here 1 2 3 4 5 number of cycle so the first one is a nitrogen having the phenyl so here this NH minus will abstract the proton wherever the nucleophile is generated okay now then it becomes NH2 okay now here only nitrogen or hydrogen is options so in second phase carbon that you having the like a uh, thio, thio carbonyl group now next one is NH third one is like R dash group sorry fourth one is R dash group fifth one is double bond O. So this is in previous case 1,3 dicarbonyl compounds are called 1,3 dicarbonyl NH NH functionality is called hydantin. Now here it is phenyl thio hydantin because of one of the compound one of the carbonyl compound will appear as a thio group. Thio hydantin phenyl thio hydantin simply it is PTH here it forms the PTH as well as like NH2 CH R dash like a C double bond O NH that means here it is R dash is eluted and NH2 R2 CO NH CH R3 C double bond OH so here it is the intact compound so here it, it forms the intact compound if you want to separate these two amino acid pump functionality then we use it the another another mole of uh, PTC then it rep the, the process will be repeated so process will be repeated now we will get the each and every component uh, as usually so this is the second method which is uh, used in the N-terminal amino acid now let us go through the third method very important one that is a Sanger's reagent Now the second, a uh, third method in N-terminal amino acid that is very important method, Sanger's reagent. We are already discussed in the Sanger's reagent that is nothing but uh, here it is a uh, fluorobenzene. Fluorobenzene having the second and fourth position is nitro. 2 comma 4 dinitrofluorobenzene is called Sanger's reagent. Whenever the Sanger's reagent will treat it with our uh, peptide, uh, peptide molecule, a strong uh, like a little bit heating uh, presence of little bit heating here it is eliminated as hf so it forms the dnfb derivative 2 comma 4 dinitrofluorobenzene dinitrofluorobenzene simply it is called as dnfb so we will get the dnfb derivative of the protein okay here nh ch or dash and o2 and o2 okay now here c double bond o nh ch or 2 c double bond o 
then H and CHR3, C double bond, OH. Okay, here uh, C terminal amino acid doesn't affect it. Now we will get the uh, mono derivative of the mono derivative of the DNFB protein dnfb protein after that uh, we will use it like a small uh, acidic compound hydrolysis so we will get the n terminal amino acid which is which is presented as a dnfb derivative of amino acid here nh ch r dash cooh we will get the is n terminal amino acid n terminal amino acid derivative so after that uh, n terminal amino acid here nh2 ch r2 c double bond o then H C H R three C O O H. Okay. If you want to, uh, if you want to uh, separate these two amino acids, again we will repeat the same process. Now here D N F B derivative, which is used, which is uh, separated by the T L C. That is a thin layer chromatography method. Okay, which is isolated as well as identified by the T L C method. After that, we will get the, our pure alcohol, our pure amino acid. So this is the very easier method for the N-terminal amino acid analysis. Okay, if so, again it it is a some somewhat uh, some difficulties are there in uh, by using the these type of Sanger's reagent. The main difficulty uh, was the main problem with Sanger's reagent is if. N terminal amino acid, listen carefully, N terminal amino acid having the another NH2 functional group. Let us example. So here that is NH2, that is lysine. If lysine presented as a N terminal amino acid, so our reagent will treat it with a, our a, like a peptide, it gives the 2 comma 4 dinitro uh, dinitrofluorobenzene derivatives as a di. So that means di substitution, di derivative of peptides, we will get it. So di DNFB derivative we will get. So those di DNFB derivatives uh, which is identified as well as isolated by the uh, thin layer chromatography method, identified by the thin layer chromatography method in similar way of the like a uh, previous discussion. Okay. Not only NH2 functional group, if like a uh, serine, so those molecules having the like OH functional system molecules having the SH functionality those type of molecules uh, will react with our uh, 2, com 2 comma 4 dinitrofluorobenzene very slowly okay when uh, here the reaction will be proceeded it, it reacts startlingly very slow reaction then it for it becomes very like a uh, uh, like a very faster reaction so this is the somewhat uh, undesirable product okay now however these Sanger's reagent was modified by the uh, recent advanced reactions that is um, as a densile method, that is as a densile method. Now the final method uh, which is uh, discussed in this, in this class, uh, that is a uh, densile method. So the fourth one is densile method. So in previous case, uh, Sanger's reagent that is nothing but two comma four dinitrofluorobenzene. Now here they are used in the uh, instead of a fluorobenzene, they are used the like a naphthen derivatives. Okay, here C double bond O, S double bond O, S double bond O, nitrogen methyl methyl. That means uh, uh, the N comma N dimethyl naphthyl sulfonyl chloride. So this total group is called as a densyl. So densyl chloride simply it is called as a dns chlorine dns chlorine so here the main advantage of densyl chloride is here, here it is a very large quantity of the fluorescent molecule very thick fluorescent fluorescent molecule so the fluorescent molecule which is easily identified by the fluorometry method which is identified by the fluorometry method so which is easily absorbed by the fluorometry method within a minute within a minute Okay, so that is the major advantage over than the Sanger's reagent. So in generally, uh, densyl chloride will treat it with our reagent. Uh, so then simply it forms the densyl NH derivatives as, as discussed as a Sanger's reagent. So here CO, NH, CHR2, C double bond O, NH, CHR3, so COOH. This is the compound. So after getting that, we, we will treat it with uh, like any a simple uh, a simple hydrolysis reaction. We will get the DNS NHCH or dash COOH plus NH2 CHR2 CO NH 
CH3COOH. COOH. This is the compound. This is the compound. Again, we will repeat at the same series. Uh, we will get the each and every amino acid individually. So, this densile derivative of the uh, N terminal amino acid, which is identified by the uh, fluorometry method. So, this fluorometry method is a very easy technique uh, to identify the, this type of amino acid. That is the recent advanced synthesis of N terminal amino acid. Okay. This is the very simple reactions regarding to the end group analysis of C terminal amino acids and N terminal amino acids. I will discuss almost all seven methods for the end group analysis. Okay, so this is very clear cut explanation regarding to the peptide synthesis. That's all for this video. Here, if it is, if it is any possible, I'll upload the a video on previous year CSAR, NET gate as well as JAM, JE means neat questions on the amino acid chapters. Okay, uh, until this is the like final video for this uh, amino acid chapter. Again, if it is any possible, I'll upload the like a uh, proteins. Uh, uh, is uh, another series of videos. If it is possible, I'll upload the protein videos also. Okay, finally, thank you for watching.